Hello YouTube, this is Bowtied Media. Today I have a review of Reaper's Militia EP. Before we get started, I want to say that this video was voted on by the Silver and Golden Bowtie Gang that you can join by hitting that join button or the top link in the description of this video if you want to vote on what happened. You can see right here, this was the voting for this week to vote on a couple options that I give you. So if you want to be a part of what the content is that I produce, join the Bowtied Gang today. But let's get into it. EP number three for Reaper is here, and it is the first that is not on Monster Cat. His first two coming out on Monster Cat, this one coming out on Welcome Records. Reaper has only been around for about two and a half years at this point, but he's proven to be a mainstay, hard-hitting D&B producer. His style of drum and bass is chaotic, mechanical, and fast-paced. Personally, I haven't been the hugest fan of Reaper in the past. His style of drum and bass, which I just talked about, isn't really for me for the most part. But there are some songs that I absolutely love, like Barricade, which hit my number eight song of 2020. So it's not to say that I don't love Reaper at all, because I really, really did love that track. But let's get into this brand new EP, Militia. It's three songs long, and each song has their own production feature on it. You've got Sin on the first track, Revel on the second, and Hellbound on the third. It's a short nine minute project, but it is filled with some D and B goodness. So here we go. Levitate with Sin kicks off the project, and it is my personal favorite of the EP. The intro here is very Tom Morello-like with a kind of hard-hitting, powerful guitar rift with a atmospheric swell uh, on top of it. But that drop just feels like pure Reaper. It's a relatively quick hit of a drop, but it is very, very classic Reaper. You've got that mechanical sounding D&B that I've talked about before, and then every four bars or so, there's like a really jittery, like, D -d 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 like, that happens over and over again, which sometimes I don't love, but I think it works on this track. Then that second drop is a little more jagged, I would say, around the edges, and opts for a more slower, almost halftime section with a kind of pickup notes here and there. It's a rockin' song that just radiates heaviness from its guitar rift to its hectic sounds and just overwhelming wall of production. The next track, Decay with Revel, continues on with this guitar sound for the intro, a predominant sounding Tom Morello kind of rift, and then puts it into the background for the rest of the runtime of the song. This song to me is the most bread and butter Reaper style track, and it's something that we've heard a lot in the rest of his discography up to this point. With essentially no vocals, the song relies on a pretty rough melody line that provides a kind of high-low separation between what would be a melody line or vocals and the bass line. But that second drop is back to Reaper's own kind of take on halftime, especially bringing it to a more darker tonality sound with this second drop compared to the first, which I think transitions well as a kind of halfway point into the album where the next song is a lot darker and deeper than I think the rest of the two are. And that track being broken with Hellbound, and this is actually the longest song on the EP, clocking in at just three minutes and 15 seconds. I think the song has by far the most intentional atmosphere put into it than any song of his discography to date. Reaper likes to, I think, jump into things right away, and I think Reaper and Hellbound on this track kind of pulled back a little bit and took the first 45 seconds to just let the song really develop. Rather than jumping into things right away, Reaper and Hellbound sort of take the first 45 seconds to create an atmosphere, which is not something that I think Reaper normally does. He sort of just loves to jump in and punch right away and just go at ya. And I think it does a better job establishing this disturbing, mechanized sound design. From what I know from all three supporting artists for each of these tracks, uh, this one sounds the most like the other person helped the most, where Hellbound, I can hear a lot more of Hellbound in this track than I could hear from Revel or Sin on the other two. And I think that's largely in part why there's more of a building atmosphere to it, or why the song is allowed to breathe a little more. Reaper likes to keep the pace over and over and over again and keep it driven, but Hellbound kind of says like, no, no, just just wait a little bit. Let's just breathe a little bit and then doom. Doom, doom, rather than da, 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 it just, <laughs> it's a good change of pace and I actually really like it for Reaper. And that in turn makes both the drops here relatively less chaotic than the other two. That sounds crazy listening to this song in a vacuum, but compared to the rest of the EP, this song sounds calmer? And I think it just makes this track sound a little bit more refined than the others. Even though I like Levitate more than this one, this sounds like a better, well-produced song, but it's just not my flavor. So while I'm not a fan of short trackless projects like this one, Reaper and Friends did a great job and produced a pretty solid three track EP. All the tracks flowed together really well and had their own uniqueness within that, which is something that I don't think Reaper actually has done a lot, especially on his last two EPs. I think the repetition of motifs and sounds from his last two EPs were a bit of a turnoff for me, 
and just generally Reaper's kind of hectic style like that wasn't necessarily for me. And so that's why I think I like this one a lot more than this other two. And maybe Reaper didn't even get the chance to make it more repetitive because it's only three songs, but I mean, in the end, it sort of worked for me. I didn't have any issues with this EP whatsoever. I don't think any of these songs are the best songs that Reaper has produced in his discography, but I think all of these are miles better than his non-single songs off of his last two EPs. And I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that I'm pretty sure I'm the minority here. My guess is people are gonna like the Monster Cat EPs much more than this one, but for me, I like this one better. And maybe that's just because Reaper is actually growing on me. Who knows? Maybe I'll have to go back and listen to the other ones and see if they stand up as much as I thought they did when they were originally released. In the end, Reaper's Militia EP was a good slight change of pace from his already shallow discography. I think that the production features really were good in accompanying what Reaper was trying to do with this project and kept them kept each song sounding unique while still keeping the cohesiveness of a Reaper EP. And while I don't normally like shorter projects like this, this is my favorite Reaper EP yet. The chaotic, evil sounding of his tracks in his discography up to this point isn't necessarily my style, so I think the shorter runtime actually helped my appreciation for this project. It is not Reaper's best individual tracks, but it is far from his worst. And with that, Reaper's Militia EP is going to score a 7. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to join the Silver and Golden Bowtie gang and vote on these videos, which ones you want to see, you can join in the link description below. And I have been Bowtie Media, and I will see you guys in another video.